We're all on. Hey, good evening. The Design Review Board public meeting of November 13th, 2014 is called to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones at this time. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table front, at the front door and submit it to staff to receive notice of subsequent meetings. Current Design Review Board agendas are available by visiting our website at www.glendaleca.gov, G-O-V. A handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and design review board appeals is available at the table by the front door. Please note that all appeals must be filed within 15 calendar days of the design review board decision date. The chairperson may reorder agenda items at his or her discretion. In terms of a roll call, board member Charchin. Present. Board member Malikian. Is absent this evening. Board member Mardian. Here. Board Member Simonian. Present. And Chair Palmer. Here. Report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on November 5, 2014. The next item is oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. I have no oral communication cards and none were submitted. There are no staff announcements at this time, and there are two cases on tonight's agenda. So I would like to turn the meeting over to uh, Madam Chair Palmer. Thank you. Our first item is PDR 1311362-B. It is 220205 Hollister Terrace. Yes. Uh, this particular project at 2205 Hollister Terrace is a new 5,980 square foot single story residence with a four car garage, pool house and pool on a vacant, just over an acre uh, square foot flag lot. This flag lot has 12 oak trees and two sycamore trees and the proposed architectural style is a French inspired design. The property is accessed from Hollister Terrace via a private 15 foot wide, 287 foot long paved flag driveway. So it is a very unusually shaped um, isolated lot just in the Glen Oaks Canyon neighborhood. This submittal is the second time for review by the Design Review Board. The board last saw this project go before you on March 27th. 2014 of this year, the board, having taken in under consideration uh, the presentation and various comments from the audience, rendered a decision to return it for redesign. There were 10 conditions that the board attached to its determination. One was to relocate the driveway to the north in order to show greater sensitivity to the neighboring properties to the south. The applicant has returned with a revised design in which case the driveway is relocated an additional 13 feet to the north for a total increased setback of 25 feet. The second comment was that the driveway and motor court surfaces shall be permeable. And as depicted on the site plan, you'll notice that the driveway and the motor court are provided with permeable interlocking pavers on the stand bed, locked in concrete grid borders. The third comment was to reconfigure the garages and or relocate the entire house toward the north in a manner that will create a larger buffer of unbuilt area at the southern edge of the property. Uh, you will notice, and I have the plans both the before and the after plans. The plans, if you don't mind, I'm gonna just come up really briefly. Like a if you don't mind, pardon, I'm not sure if, ah, the pointer. Mr. Simone, sorry, that, we'll back on your seat. 
Um, these would these would be the plans from the March 27th hearing date, and these are the ones under current determination for you to this evening. Um, in regards to this actual comment, was to reconfigure the gar the garage or relocate the entire house. As you see here in the previous proposal, they had an attached eight-car garage and basically flanking a motor court. The new plans show a four-car garage, two on each side, so the overall eight garage, um, eight parking space garage has then now been reduced to four and they still comply with code because a house that's under 6,000 square feet only needs a four-car garage. So they have re they have essentially, in this case, create, created that larger buffer on the south property line for up to a 25-foot setback and then reduced the eight-car garage to a four-car garage. We'll just stay up here because I think there might be additional questions. Um, the fourth item was to provide additional landscaping at south of the property, including indigenous tree species, to better screen the property from the neighbors to the south. I have both the previous landscape plan as well as the current landscape plan, and there were additional trees proposed and few shrubs, but also the majority of it would be just ground cover for the additional setback. The fifth item was to consider reducing the number of garage spaces or relocating spaces to other portions of the property. Again, this was just discussed. They reduced it from eight to four. Uh, the sixth item was to relocate the pool house to the south in order to show greater sensitivity to the neighboring properties to the north. You'll notice that the pool house on the northerly end actually has been set back from 10 feet to 15 feet, so for an additional five foot from the north property line. The seventh item was to reduce the number of outdoor lights on the building walls, landscaping areas, hardscape areas, to avoid creating brightness levels that could negatively impact adjoining properties and provide shielded fixtures. Um, as shown in your packets, I believe, oh, we have the plans right here, with the examples of the lighting of the Landscape lighting will be kept to a minimum and light fixtures all will be shielded. The eighth comment was to provide an exterior landscaping, exterior and landscape lighting plan. Again, that was presented to you in your packets, sheet A5. The ninth comment was to reduce the amount of flat footed area by altering the pitch of the mansard roofs or by other means to mitigate the appearance of these areas as seen from the nearby properties at higher elevations. Uh, the two roof plans is shown here and also somewhat visible on the profiles. The roof slope was reduced from 12 and 12 to an 8 to 12 and flat roofs have all been eliminated with the exception of the loggia canopy. And last uh, but not least, the plan submitted for plan check shall clearly identify any development within 20 feet of the oak and sycamore tree drip lines including landscaping and irrigation, grading, drainage, changes to the wall and fences, and the driveway to the satisfaction of the urban forester. Um, as you noted in your staff reports, uh, comments were submitted from the urban forester based on the revised uh, plans that were submitted. So a condition has been added to ensure that all of the protected trees will be uh, protected in place. So with that said, Overall, the site planning appears consistent with the intent of the hillside and the landscape design guidelines as conditioned by the Urban Forester's Office Review. Um, mass and scale, again, it's a one-story structure. It is one of the larger homes in the neighborhood, but because of its secluded site, as well as its one-story height, um, it is basically consistent with the design guidelines and in regards to the design and detailing, the overall design and detailing comprised of good quality materials and finishes that are internally consistent and reinforce the overall French inspired design. That concludes staff's presentation. I just touched on the conditions and comments from the previous March 27th board meeting. If you'd like, I can go into greater detail, but or answer any questions you I just you have, have a very quick question. Uh, yes. 
the lot, and I missed this, and you went over it in the beginning. Is it an actual flag lot? So all this um, shaded area is part of the private property? Correct. And then all the other homes that are accessed, um, these homes, well, let's say even this home above it, how is, is that accessed through the same private road or? It actually, it, it has a portion has of, there is an easement, I believe there is a private driveway for the other property. Which is part of this property, just has a, an easement to provide access portion towards? Portion of it. I see, okay. Oh, I see, so a portion of it provides the easement, the, the access, and then the actual road is is, Correct. is, is not in the dark shaded areas, Correct. maybe in this it's area. On the adjacent property. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I will note that we did receive a letter from Angela Lucos regarding the property, and that's everybody has a copy of that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open the public session, and I have numerous cards here. I'm going to call up the uh, architect, Mr. Zarabi. Address for the record. Yes, good evening. Uh, um, Chad Palmer and uh, members of the board. My name is Hamlet Zorabians. I'm the project architect. Uh, for the record, my address is 3467 Ocean View Boulevard, Suite B, uh, Glendale 91208. Um, uh, Vilia uh, articulated you know, what we've done so far uh, very well. So I'm not going to go into much detail unless you have any questions from, from me, but just want to say a few things about the project itself. Uh, as uh, she mentioned, uh, this is a very secluded area, and I'm, I trust that you have already visited the site. Uh, it's a very unique uh, site. Um, there are about uh, another three or four properties as such that they exhibit the same size. Uh, but the rest of the properties that, the, that they're surrounding, they're much smaller uh, um, uh, properties, especially the ones that are facing uh, Hollister Terrace. Uh, those properties are around 10,000, a little less than 10,000 square feet. Um, and they're in a kind of a lower level. Uh, this site uh, is, is a flat lot. Uh, the driveway is shared um, by five uh, different, uh, four or five uh, uh, properties that uh, they're the same size. Not everyone from Hollister, they're sharing the, the same driveway. I just want to make that clear. They're only internal lots within within that area that they're sharing that. And that particular driveway, uh, our property line goes to the center of that driveway. So half of it is an easement on our property and half of it is uh, the adjacent property's easement. Uh, and um, as far as the lot is concerned uh, itself, the majority of the lot, uh, with the exception of the, of the stem of it, if you will, which, which falls into the driveway, which uh, it, it's a 6% average slope. So it's a very unique lot. I mean, first time I, I visited the site, I was very surprised because I, you don't have that many properties like this in Glendale. Normally, properties that are huge, not they don't have a buildable pad area as such. So this one is a very large one. The area, I think last time, uh, Commissioner uh, Mardian uh, mentioned that what, what would be the area of that stem separately, which I calculated to be around 4,000 square feet. So that if you're sub subtracting from our uh, an acre over an acre lot, it, it, it brings it to 39,900 something. So about 40,000 square feet is the path itself. Uh, the property is surrounded by existing oak trees, which uh, uh, I personally very much love and my uh, uh, client. Therefore, what we, what, what we did, we were very sensitive as far as not um, you know, disturbing the surrounding. Um, trees. So the, the building, that is why the building uniquely is, is, is situated right in the middle of the pad, whereby we are missing and we are staying away from, from the drip line of the trees. There are two other trees that are not, seriously, they're not uh, in a very good condition. They're in the middle of the property, which the, we submitted photos and reports of the arborists to, to, um, to the city, and uh, they're going to be removed. There are only two trees that need, they need to be removed. And that, that's included in your oak, oak tree uh, report. The building, we, we decided, uh, along with the owner, to, to go with a one-story rather than two-story. And uh, what we, the way we've designed the building, we've uh, followed the, the steps of the contours. And, and lately, uh, we've given you a profile uh, of the entire lot, uh, starting from 
the property uh, to the north of us, which there is a single house there, and then the property coming all the way down towards Hollister where we have the other buildings on there. That just depicts a section through the contours of the, from the center of, taken from the center of the uh, property, pro building actually a proposed pro project. So as you can see, what we have done, we've uh, followed the contours and one of the reasons for that is to minimize grading. We're not proposing any retaining walls, not, not at all. I mean, we're not even proposing anything. We're not going to be disturbing the grade exception with except uh, what it, it's uh, required for the building of the building itself in the footprint area and, and the foundation. Um, and uh, low lighting, uh, the landscape lighting, we kept it to minimum. They're all shielded. Uh, we have actually reduced the number of lights, exterior lights to the building. Uh, and the roof, it's also very important to say, to mention that last time there were some discussions as far as the flat roofs are concerned, as, as Vilia also mentioned. And uh, by reducing the, uh, the, the slope of the roof that we had, uh, we were able to come up with a complete um, a, you know, slope roof area. There are certain, uh, certain locations uh, that there will be a little less uh, um, sloped, uh, but uh, it will be comparable material that we'll be using. Uh, uh, then, uh, the, with the exception of the canopy in the rear of the project, which will be flat. When we say flat, we're talking about a minimum slope. But the entire building itself will, be ha will have a flat bomb and slope roof. Um, so as you can see, that square footage that, that is depicted there, the square f total floor area of the building, the square footage that is, we are in comparison, that it's in the schedules and everything, that includes the uh, separate or detached pool house, if you will. Uh, and it, it excludes also an 100 square feet of over, over the area that is allowed, maximum allowed for the parking structure per zoning ordinance. Because you're allowed to have 700 square feet of parking area. If you go more than that, then it counts towards your full floor area. So all of that is, is being counted within that square footage that we are uh, you know, showing here. Um, and the calculations, comparisons, FAR calculations, they're all there. And um, I'll be available for any questions that you, you might have. But um, I personally, I love the project. I think that it's, it's, it's designed well as one of my uh, nicer projects. And uh, we've, we've, we're, we're taking no shortcuts as far as the materials are concerned. We're proposing to do a very nice uh, secluded and fitting building, one-story building, which you're not going to be able to see from the street in a great deal. Um, and we love the trees. That's why in elevations we're depicting the trees all around it. And that's how the, the scale works with the project. So uh, that's, that's all I have to say. And if you have any questions. OK. <laughs> I have a question. Sure. Uh, is, is this uh, section, is this the garage? That is the garage. Okay. And then do you know approximately what your setback is from that property line to the garage? 25 feet we've depicted uh, there, yes. And then do you know, and this looks like another 25 feet to the, yeah, the about 50 feet from yeah, adjacent properties. To exactly. I mean, that's right. To, to the, uh, the adjacent, I mean, the very first house is depicted on the, on the side plan, if you see the tip of it. Over here. So you have at least another 18 feet, I would say, to the property line, and then you have another 25 feet from there. So you're talking about 25 plus 18, it's about 43, 43 feet so. distance. Uh -huh. Yes. We used to have less, but now eliminated four-car garage. And so then, um, <clears throat> as far as your setback on, uh, along this side to the property line, um, do you know approximately what that is? You can look it up. A 40, 49 on one side from the property. 39, okay. And then do you know uh, that that road is how much further past the property line, more or less? Existing road? Uh, existing road? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's depicted there. Uh, it's about, I would say, at least 10 feet. So a five foot of it would be in our property and then the 10 foot of the other side. And I then mean, the pavement other, itself. Those other properties are probably, what, 20, 25 feet? Past the road, right? Uh, yeah, I have. I have. I think in the pamphlet, this is the this is the depiction of the yes. house there. So they're about, if I estimate it, there is about 23 feet to the property line, mm -hmm. and then, you know, so yeah, I would say about at least 20 feet to the roadway itself. Okay, great. Thank you.
Mr. Barty. So I had a question, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, thank you first for providing that section. I appreciate that. Um, can you tell me uh, what are the mitigation measures for those two trees that you're removing? Is there any mitigation measures for the removal or is just flat out removal? What we have done, we haven't proposed any mitigation measures. I think it has to do with also what Annie will decide. But we have what we've done in our report. We have uh, value, we've put included the values for the trees. Okay. So normal circumstances, most of the time, if the the tree is healthy and we are removing it, then uh, whatever the value is assigned to it, you need to actually provide that with to the city, or you replace the tree with the number of trees that will equal the valuation. So in this case, the tree is not in good shape, so there was... They were not in a good shape, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but in any case, we'll be happy whatever the, the city will decide. Um, the other question, I, you know, I was kind of concerned about the grading, but it seems like it's a balance uh, cut is. and fill. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's a technical thing that you may need to correct, because you have five steps coming to the building. And yes. at the garage, you show two steps, but there is about a foot elevation difference between the front part at the garage. So you may have to add six or seven more steps from the this right hand side garage to get to the building. As I noticed on the plan it's mm. all flat, correct? The house is basically flat. Inside of it you mean? Inside and with the exception of the other with garage. the exception of the garage. Garage. Yeah. But you show only two steps from the right hand side garage to get to the building. Yeah uh, and I can try to explain the situation. You want to come uh, up and yeah. explain? If I can? Sure. 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 Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great comment, but I'm going to just take a picture of the point. Because I'm trying to see what's right. going to do. Oh, sorry. Right here. Oh, it's here. Okay. You see, the, the, the contours are depicted right here. This this is the contour. This is the uh, three. Yeah, I saw those. But yeah, the, 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 on the, the garage, it says 234. Two, yeah, but you can see 232. the inside. Yeah, but here, this segment is also sunken. Sunken. I have another three That's three fine, steps. I understood that. But the right-hand side, the right-hand side garage, you only show two steps, but in reality... Oh, you mean over here? Over no, there. there will be some internal, uh, interior, internal, couple of steps. The reason steps I'm questioning, is that going to affect the height of those garages? Mm. Uh, or are you going to have to carve it in within the inside to make that work? Uh, no, I think what we what we are what we what we've done here because you can see the contour comes over here, so this actually is a is a higher elevation than this segment over here. Naturally, I understand that the garage you still have to get to it. No, yeah. no, I know, I yeah. understand. So we might have to add uh, another couple of steps over here. Yeah, you're gonna need it. Yeah, That's we're gonna need that. Yeah. But our intention was to keep this ele this elevation, uh, the the point, I mean the datum point, and then these segments are lower. And these segments are lower. Okay. That's what I just want you to make a cut, so we don't want to change the elevation. Sure, sure, height, sure. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we should revise. Uh, maybe, perhaps, add a couple of steps here as a uh, transition yeah. from garage to. Um, so. Sir, while you're up there, I have a question. When you're done. Yeah, there there were some design changes. You introduced new dormers in the or garages versus what you had flat before. Uh, yeah, um, that's up there. Uh, what was the rationale you, behind that? Oh, you mean here? Yeah. Well, yeah, because when we were actually trying to do uh, do away with flat roofs, okay. I had to bring the roof down. Correct. And, and the garage area there, because it's very low, actually was, was coming over the windows. So we had to naturally, you know, uh, do that. And when we are doing that, actually, it gives a very nice, um, you know, it adds an ex extra detail to it, which is nice, instead of having just a straight. So we just found it very naturally when it comes down. This, if you if you see, the, the yeah, I didn't see it on the roof plan, but I see what you're saying. Yeah, so because okay. over here, yeah, because over here we, our roof was in this configuration. Then when we are when we put a central ridge there, it just came down. Yeah. So in other words, it's actually the roof is kind of pushed it down. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, I don't know if it's under our preview to ask the question about the respond to the letter about the trash That's access. That's what I was going to ask. That was going to yeah. make my question. Thanks. Well, we Can you <laughs> enlighten us, please? I <laughs> signed the reference plan. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what is the situation with uh, as far as trash goes? How is that picked up? Um, 
I, I, there was a concern by the neighbors right, that they, you right. couldn't have access by the trash. I can only guess. I mean, tell you the truth, I don't have an answer for that. But if, if, the, if whatever the system in the neighborhood is, that means it could be that the, the truck only collects the, the trash uh, from the, you know, you know, Hollister, the Hollister, Hollister Terrace. I, I don't know what okay. there. I've seen I've seen trash bins within the property on the next door. Across from it, there is a fenced right, property. Yeah. So we will allocate some area there to have more trash there. But if, if 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 what that means is if we have to bring them outside for the truck to pick it up, we'll do that. I think I think the concern is the, the following: in certain areas, uh, you're going to need to bring the trash to the roadside. The roadside for you is almost 300 feet from your yes driveway so you might have to allocate not only just some space but some mechanism of transporting that, okay. that refuse sure. uh, and it looks for like where your kitchen is you don't have a walkway or anything detailed so my concern was how do you actually uh, for a house this size deal with refuse I can I, I should address, address it Areas there, even in the front, we have man landscaped areas. So I may be able to do something there with a very like low wall yeah, or something, so you, so you can have it accessible. Yeah, to yeah accessible to that. Yeah. And then, as far as the, if you make a condition to look into it or something. Well, you can ask the neighbors if anybody knows. Them. While you're up there, are you going to be removing that large eucalyptus tree that's on the it's right here. on which one? It's right here. No, no. Okay. All of the perimeter wall of trees, they're all staying. Okay. There's only two that I actually depicted: one here, and one. There. The way it is, if uh, none of not not uh, many of the trees are within the footprint of our house, two of the protected ones are. Uh, I don't remember any. They're the natural setting of it, so. We're going to be just going with a with a, um, a fence that is transparent. It's going to be just a metal railing. Just that's all. So, um, oh, I have a question about the fence. I do too. Okay, go ahead. go ahead. I think I read that it was going to be a chain link fence. Well, and to uh, my knowledge, the city doesn't allow chain link perimeter fences. Is that true, or the city allows chain link fences that is not visible from any public right of way? Okay. So, so do we? understand what kind of a chain link fence you're talking about or? whatever it is it, it needs to look nice we just we're not after doing there are existing chain link fences here uh, that the, obviously they don't look good but you need to if we provide we, chain link fence then we have to provide landscaping in front of it which is we don't want to see it but but uh, uh, we you know if that's the condition we can actually provide uh, you know uh, steel rails or any any sort of a uh, rail that we want but we just didn't want to put a Any other questions? And I have an orientation qu question. Um, the way the house is oriented, if we're looking at the aerial, um, where would you say this this kind of flat area ends up being more or less in this? Oh, yeah, there is an existing swimming.
Yes. And and the only protect so, well, two of these guys are protected Correct. and they're gonna get removed. Some of those are missing. That's right. right. Because some of these some of these that are not protected trees are gonna come off. Because they're just shrubs. They're, they're like just yeah, okay. I mean it's students. And then when we're looking from the pool house, they have I think like one Is, um, is it more or less the same 50 feet from the pool house to the northern home if we're looking at that site section that you've provided? Uh, yeah, it's actually it's more. And then that yard is somewhere here, probably here. Uh, yeah. Perhaps. This is just one contour that we've cut right. out from. Depends the on where it's yes. cut. That's Thank right. You. Okay. And if you would have, what do you think is the great difference between that flat yard and, say, the pool house roof? Uh, if the if the if if my uh, recollection is correct, this is the slope side. If this is the flat area, it should be somewhere there. So it's basically means. home, uh, but my concern is the size of the house, 6,000 square feet. It seems very out of character for the canyon, let alone the immediate neighbor's homes. Some of the things that attracted me to Glen Oaks Canyon when we were looking to buy a house with a modest home is the feeling of being in a country tucked in a small canyon in the hillside with the advantage of a short commute to work. We bought our home because of the view we have and the wilderness to the west of us. I'm sure this is one of the things that attracted Harry and his family to our canyon. The serenity and city views are incredible. My fear is that the home is still overlit with 23 lights. The design of the lights shown on the plan emit light from all four sides because the bulb is enclosed by glass. There are 14 lanterns on the main house itself with the same design. There's no shield for the fixture to light the ground. Instead, it spills much light into a much wider area. Is it possible to eliminate some of the lights or to make some of the lights motion lights so they're not on every night, distracting the eye from city views and the serenity of undeveloped hillsides? It would be preferable for the property to blend in with the landscape of the hillside both during the day and night. My other confusion is on page two, the comparison of the neighborhood. It lists the square footage of nearby homes, with the largest being 7,380 square feet. But later in the neighborhood survey list, the largest home is listed as 5,221 square feet. I, I want to know where the home is at 7,380 square feet. Anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Larry Travis? <coughs> My name's Larry Travis. I'm a 581 Arch Place. Um, and I have a lot to cover in the prepared statement, but I do want to say that um, I've had several conversations with the applicant, uh, Harry, and, um, and they've been very amicable, and it's very hard to come up here and say anything negative about something you know, someone can wants ask, to do. Can I ask where your house is relative? It's, it's above. It's above. Yeah. Uh, the it's house a, directly above? Yes. Okay. The abutting property to the north. Uh, there's a property between, but it's straight up. Okay. Uh, pretty much straight up. Is it this house over here? I can't see. Um, right here? Uh, no, it's not right. 
this is on the hill. Got it. That's fine. Perfect. Thank you. 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 Uh, as I said at the last meeting, the main concern of many of our neighbors is just how large this project still is. If you look at the 28 homes in the survey list of the Stafford Court, we moved two of the largest homes, one because it was built 80 years ago and there was no homes within yelling, yelling distance, and the other because it is an anomaly for the neighborhood, a, a 3,749 square foot two-story with an FAR of 0.50. If we remove these two, the remaining 26 homes have an average of 2,108 square feet. 12 of the 26 are below 2,000 square feet. This proposed home uh, will nearly be larger than the combined square footage of the three homes sitting southeast of the property and would dwarf most of the homes in the survey and in a few cases will be almost five times larger. The staff report says that this proposal meets all or at least most of the design guidelines, but staff guidelines don't consider compatibility. That's why we're here, right? It feels that its mere size makes this house incompatible. And what's making the house so large? It's hard to read some of these numbers, but it seems three of the bedrooms averaged a little over 500 square feet. The master bedroom with closets and bath appears to be about 1,068 square feet, or half of the square footage of the average home in the neighborhood. I'm not knocking a nice sized bedroom. If you have kids or guests, you may be hanging out there a lot. But why are the kitchen family area and the dining room living room area so large? The dining room living room is about 34 by 30 or 1,020 square feet. Again, about half the size of the average home in the area. So maybe there's just too much volume and that's why it feels out of scale. A fear of mansionization, how one project can allow others to grow, not in just the media area, but the whole canyon was still high on the list with neighbors, as was this concern of having one huge house amongst smaller, modest ones. Several neighbors uh, addressed what they thought was an aesthetic eyesore. Why is this house gated? And the house across from it, why is it gated? This isn't a gated community. They didn't understand why there needed to be gates in Glen Hope, uh, needed to be uh, homes with gates in Glen Oaks Canyon. One last thing that did not seem to be addressed but was brought up the last time had to do with what already is a problem on the property, drainage, and how such a massive massive project will add to that problem. As I said before, I'm not opposed to someone building a home in that location, but this house, is especially compared to the surrounding homes, just doesn't seem to fit. Thank you for your time. Thank you Thank very much. Uh, Amy Cox? <clears throat> Hi, I'm Amy Cost, um, and I live at 2229 Hollister, which is one of the little 2,000 square foot houses that is right <coughs> against the fence of where this will be. And so this building will basically take place in my backyard. So I have, my concerns are number one, it being lit into my windows all night. Right now it's a dark neighborhood at night, all the lights are off, which is part of the charm. And it looks like this will be a bright light. And number two, how long building will go on. I work in my backyard, I work at home, I'm a writer, and um, the bigger the project, the longer it takes. It looks like it's gonna be a very big project in my backyard. And um, of course I want it as far from my fence as possible, but that's mostly it, the light and the duration of the project. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any other cards. Is there anybody who wishes to speak that didn't fill out a card? Okay, I'm gonna ask Mr. Jeromian, would you like to come back here? <coughs> uh, yes, for the record again, my name is Hamlet Zorovias, I'm the project architect. Uh, there is 3467 Ocean View Boulevard, with B, Glendale, California. Uh, just to address uh, some of the comments that was mentioned here. Um, um, as far as the, the matter of uh, size, how big is the house and whatever it is, it's all depending on the, the, the contours of a, a given lot. Uh, not two lots are uh, uh, the same all the time. There are unique lots within certain neighborhoods <coughs> which have to be dealt with it uh, uniquely. So it would be really funny to have a 2,000 square feet house right in the middle of a, uh, you know, an acre lot. It seems to me it's, 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 that's not even to the proportion. 
As far as the, the zoning ordinances are concerned, that has been already taken into consideration. Uh, we have the zoning code in place that uh, is, is, uh, is placed there to, to make sure that the development uh, uh, ratio of the coverage and open space that it creates after the, its development, obviously, to be uh, what, what the code from the very beginning intended. Uh, this particular lot um, uh, is the buildable area legally. It's, it's over 8,000 square feet. Uh, however, we are two th almost 2,000 square feet below that, that area. Our FAR, uh, compared to the other uh, uh, properties there, uh, there is just so minuscule that it's, it, we can't even bring any comparison. The lowest com uh, FAR that is in the, in the surrounding area is about 0.25, where we are actually going 0.15. So what that means is that our open area that we are leaving behind and we're not developing, it's in such a size that it just uh, uh, provides the, all the necessary light and everything that there is. And so the building itself is not intrusive. Uh, one of the um, other issues that uh, was brought up was how long this is going to take, the construction is. It's a very normal project. It's, it's not going to have a, a drastic grading issues. Uh, so the building, uh, uh, I estimate that it's going to be about 14 months, 12 to 14 months period will be all done. Um, and and um, uh, as far as the, another comment that was before uh, you know, our break was about the trash collection. And I just found out after consulting with my uh, <laughs> client is that the next door neighbor has a um, ATV, um, what is that? It's an ATV with a trailer on it. Yeah, it's an ATV with a trailer on it. And my client has also an ATV. So normally they, they take their trash trash cans on the ATV and they drive it down to Hollister and then leave it there. That's my, I, what I was presuming, I think it was correct because I don't think the trucks are going to necessarily come in. So everyone is responsible to bring their trash bins and uh, leave it at the at the Hollister there. So where the trucks are going to be collecting. So I think that seems to be the, the order of the day for that. Okay, thank you. A question on the chair to Mr. Zara. Yes. Um, I, I have the same question in one of the in one of the speakers mentioned the seven thousand three hundred. I, I believe that's a typo. It is. It could be it is a it could be. Uh, because I have questioned this the last time. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. the other question I calculate but I can't see the how much did you reduce by doing this change in the original design, square footage-wise? Square footage-wise? Is it just the garages, so it's about 800 square feet, basically? Or well, you were the, yeah, because purely the 800 square feet that was garage we used to be, that was, we were supposed to consider it as Correct, a garage. Correct, but I'm just trying to see what it went, Yeah, it went from 7,380 to 6,726. So almost. Everything included, yeah. everyone. So there's the reduction of yeah. 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 Any other questions? Okay, I want to close the. Uh, actually, I have one question, Madam Chair. Maybe. Well, I can ask you about it. It's the tile. You mentioned uh, slave covering. I'm assuming that's actually lightweight concrete tile, or it's for the roof itself. For the roof itself. Uh, we like to actually use slate. Yeah, but it's not. It's lightweight concrete. Lightweight it's not just a composition. Oh, no, it's not composition. Because no, they're, no. they're making this more yes. slate looking composition. Yes, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Actually. To clarify, you're actually going to be using natural slate. Yes, we have used another one right there across uh, from uh, Country Park, and, it, and it, that's the material we're going to be using. It's actually a slate, it's, it's a tile cut slate, actually. Any further questions? I'm going to close the public. Thank you. Mr. Marty, you want to start? Thank you. Um, you know, I originally wanted to first review this. I had the same concerns about the square footage and so forth and the compatibility issue. When I look at this, uh, although the, the, the floor area ratio versus the lot sizes uh, surrounding it, and some of them are you know, higher numbers. This lot has a large lot, it, it is a large lot, and we, with our direction, I think the applicant uh, was kind of to listen to our conditions, we've confined the footprint of this house on all sides, basically. Um, 
there's substantial setbacks from all around the building, I mean, all around the property. Um, by reducing the garages, we have a substantial buffer from the rear. Um, I'm satisfied with the site planning uh, part of it. Um, I just want to make sure these details that the quality of the materials that has been used carries through the project. Um, my concern as far as design, I think it's leading to a country French approach. Mm -hmm. uh, one, you know, and I'd like to hear what my other colleagues think about it. You're creating the cemetery, in, in basically a symmetrical. Uh, can you center those, and I suggest we center those garages a little in, you know, rather than, because you're, you're leading to a symmetrical design in this case. <coughs> And I'm uh, yeah. um, if, this, if this could be centered more towards inside, it would give you two more feet, actually, a buffer. Um, that's the only suggestion that I have, and I want to make sure that the tile is clay. It's a lightweight tile. Um, actually, I like the design. It's a, it's a one story. And, and again, I say the. the he followed all the conditions that we've asked him in the past, and uh, you know, I'm satisfied with the site planning. The fact that he's you know preserving you know 11 or so trees, and um, and we, will, I am also going to make a condition that you know there would be individual trees uh, added. Like the site, I believe the conditions in the staff report say that too. Um, the other item that I want to see that's uh, implemented in later on or during plan check is where the AC units are going to be. Uh, I'm going to clarify the downspot gutters and so forth on the building, make sure that it's consistent with the design. Uh, overall, I'm, I'm supportive of the project. Mr. Church? Um, I think the design overall is, is fitting for the area, given the fact that it's a large lot. Um, I think that there should be some sort of refuse uh, plant built into the project. Um, I think you're going to have uh, experience a lot of issues uh, with you know, using an ATV and such. Uh, I'm very familiar with having a long driveway and having these types of issues. Uh, so um, I think if it's planned out and it works well, I would make a recommendation. Uh, I know that Glendale does not have this uh, as a requirement, but my recommendation would be if you're in an area with a lot of uh, wildlife, uh, deer especially, um, you have spikes which are a detail, uh, maybe like a French detail, but I think on your gate, uh, you, I would recommend maybe not having those spikes. I don't think you want to see an impaled uh, wildlife uh, there. Uh, and then I will defer to my, uh, to Madam Chair, on the tree issues, because I think we confer, we concur that there's uh, some need for some indigenous uh, plantings. Mr. Simone. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with my colleagues in that it is a, a project that, that seems to blend well into this very unique site. And, and, and I'd like to elaborate on that in a moment is uh, all the years that we've been going at it, this board that I've been a board member, we've seen lots of large lots in these R1R areas. And but typically what happens is you have a fifty or sixty thousand square foot parcel, but when you look at the buildable pad, it's maybe ten thousand square feet or, or eight thousand square feet or whatever the figure is. And about eighty to eighty five percent of it or even sometimes more is very, very steep to green. And so when we're looking at this unique property in relation to all the other um, available properties in the canyons, I would really underline unique and in, in that it is just a very, very special lot in that sense. And so I don't believe that we are setting a bad precedent by approving a large property for those reasons in that we're probably not going to see too many large properties like this that are flat or this much buildable flat area. Um, and so I don't think that any board 
member past who's sitting here in the future is going to use this as a precedent without really looking into the details of a given scenario, of a given situation. And if another property is brought forward that's this size, however, has the typical 80, 85% of it is in, in a very soap-like manner, then of course this would be the wrong precedent to use for that future project. So I just wanted to clarify that and, and explain some of those thought processes. And when we're looking at this given site plan, we're talking about about 43 feet of setback along the street, um, on along the west property line more or less, and then around 40 feet more or less on the east property line. And then on the south, we have a 25 foot setback from the garage, but then you really don't have too much activity going on in a garage than parking cars. And when you look at a 20 foot depth of a garage, you're talking about about 45 feet plus another 43 feet to the homes to the south. So it's about an 80 foot setback from, you know, this area, say, to this. And so we're talking about a, a site plan that has really taken into consideration exuberant setbacks to try to um, come up with a home that's large. Now, and I think the reason why it so uh, seems somewhat odd because it just doesn't happen too often in Atlanta. I mean, you, uh, in, in LA, this happens all the time where you get these larger homes that are built into these lots. But uh, this, I wouldn't categorize this as a, as a mansion, really, because it's just it's 6,000 square feet on a very large flat lot. And we need to kind of take that into context. And that's, that's the hard part of, of any board is to understand that. And I believe that's the direction we're going because it, it has these exuberant setbacks. Now, in addition to that, it's one story and not two story. And that's very important to, to point out as well that they have maintained a one story. And they're going with a high quality roof which doesn't have any flat areas, which was a big concern of ours last time around. And so when we're looking from the canyon down, you know, one will see roof areas. Um, I think it's a good idea that the vegetation on the south property line has been maintained and all those mature trees are maintained. And I absolutely agree that we should add some more um, to create as much of a buffer between the homes to the south and that said. And I thought that previously with the way the garages were set up, they were actually impacting it much more than they are now. And so um, we're in an urban setting, homes will be built, and when you have a flat home site next to you, chances are something's going to be built there. Now it's actually nice that they're not going for some sort of a subdivision or anything like that, and we're just getting one home as opposed to possibly going down that battlefield. But uh, in essence, I think if we continue with some very mature uh, evergreens on that south side, maybe even some, uh, whatever Ms. Palmer might suggest as, as, a, as a good option, to further buffer that, it would, it would help. Um, and I do see that some effort has been made, a lot of effort has been made on the lighting, and I think that's very important. Um, and we could maybe continue that to make sure that the lighting is screened. And whether that's some sort of a lighting design or, or, or to really make sure that the exterior lights, as some suggested, might be on motions in the areas that's not as, as, as uh, necessary for that courtyard. The perimeters are maybe motions. Or in whatever the case is, that it's all contained on a downward spiral. And, and then at that point, I think, we as a board would have done everything we could to minimize impacts towards the neighboring property. So those are some of my thoughts. Um, I'd love to uh, hear Madam Chair as well. Well, I agree with all the comments. I just want to add the fact that this house, even though it's one story and it's on a large lot, it's not like it's a square house. It has the courtyard, we have a separate pool house, so it is dispersed around the lot. Um, my comments would be I would like to make a condition that if they do the chain link, that it be like a black coated chain link, something that's more decorative. Uh, as far as the screening from the neighbors down below on Hollister Terrace, 
right now the lot comes down and then it slopes down to the lots and they have proposed trees down at the lower part of that slope which the head of the tree will offer some screening but uh, I think the planting of the trees is too linear this is an open lot you have oak trees you have eucalyptus I'd like to leave that screening of the olive trees but above that put some indigenous trees you have one next door one of those lots has a deodora the deodora goes very well with this architecture so maybe put some larger 48 inch box deodoras or the oaks or the sycamores to make this more of a complete surrounding similar trees um, i agree with the lighting that especially that we've seen from the houses down below that that be screened a little more um, and just look at the landscape plan we have a chance there's some areas that are not labeled masses of brown cover that we don't know what they are so that's just a, an item to check out but in general I'm in favor of this project and I think the architect has done a good job in mitigating all the concerns we had from the previous okay that, um, the do we want to read all the yes. conditions we have wait we staff included two comments the first one was that the plan submitted for plan check shall clearly identify any development within 20 feet of the oak and sycamore tree drip lines, including landscaping, irrigation, grading, drainage, changes to wall and fences in the driveway to the satisfaction of the forester. And then there was a little bit of a, a continuation of the sentence that the mitigation measures shall be printed on the plan check plan. The second one was that the applicant shall consider planting additional indigenous and drought tolerant landscaping in the increased open space area between the driveway, the remaining four car garages, and the neighbors to the south to increase dense screening and privacy. And this is where your issue comes into play um, to include larger, perhaps 48 inch They have specified box. 48 inch box in the olives, which is fine, but I'd like to continue that theme, house is large. So 48 inch box indigenous trees yes. to, include, to be included. I would add, I don't know if they're going to include, I mean that would primarily be oak and sycamore, but I would add some um, deodora trees. Okay, oak, sycamore, and deodoras. Okay. The other comments that I heard from the board, one would be that if the chain link is installed, that it be a black powder coated chain link fence. Is that correct? It's not powder coated, it's so. Oh, vinyl coated. Sorry, vinyl coated. That the air, the exterior lighting around the perimeter of the home be on motion, motion sensors and downlit. Is that consistent throughout the entire home? Um, that's a lot of on and off. That's a lot. Of on and off. Uh, I would. We do this in other associations to limit the wattage to 40 watts. And I think that also with the new energy standards uh, requires you to have low voltage uh, and uh, and LED lights. LED lights. And you have to have motion sensors or occupancy sensors and things like that. Um, and they're limited on the voltage on this. But I think the quarter work. But we can certainly make sure. That well, especially screening from being concerned of the houses that are that the lights are going to be shining up. If you have too many lantern lights, they do have a, the ones he's shown has a cover on it. Correct. Maybe they could be screened a little more. The ones that are proposed as part of the plan are 18 inches in height. And they have a cap on the top. Correct. Maybe, I'm just saying, I think the applicant understands our concern and yes. you can study that. We could study it and see what sure. other light yeah. fixtures might be more in line and conducive for this sure. kind of a There's also a comment made that the applicant shall provide a refuse plan for a review and approval by, I would assume, integrated waste staff since they are the experts here in the city. I don't and think we addressed the drainage issue. I know that comment goes to the counter, but. Correct, the drainage. You don't have the grading. Grading. Uh, I mean, just so the audience knows that. That has been a question. The public sometimes. works requires as part of any new, uh, any new single family home proposal, they would require a drainage and grading plan. So that would be standard. And there was also a condition that the fence gate shall not have spikes. Recommendation. Is that a consideration? 
Yes. Okay. We have rules. So, I think you asked that we have rules about how many spikes on these places. No, there are no rules. Uh, the chain link, though, as mentioned during the uh, staff presentation, you have to have vegetation to screen it from adjacent neighbors. And I don't think but not that addresses that. So if they're going to do the chain link, that. It's part of code, actually. Right. So, yes. Yeah. We would take a look at that before it goes into pond check. Right. And last, that I believe there was a comment made that the applicant shall incorporate integrated downspout gutters. Was that a consideration or a condition? No, there's conditions to have gutters and downspouts. But integrated downspouts? Um, integrated not on gutters? This, not on this particular okay. I think it's not inter, no, no, not, not internal, inter not internal not integrated. Yeah, it, it's exposed there. Exposed there. And we also have um, to review the location of the AC units, um, that the quality of the materials carry throughout the project. I think you're going to have to speak up a little bit because I'm having trouble hearing you. <laughs> <laughs> that the location of the AC units be reviewed that the quality of the materials carried throughout the project and that this is the one I need exactly what you were saying that the roofing material is called out as slate and you want slate, to make lightweight sure lightweight to tile, concrete tile. Okay. and that's all I have but it could be it, it could be slate lightweight concrete tile or it could be actual, actual from what slate. I'm or understanding it's actual slate tile that's fine we spoke that actual <coughs> it's just a little lighter on the structure. Okay. So, I have another comment. And you had one other, which was to consider centering um, the two garages. Maybe I can uh, address that. Um, the HVAC, uh, do you think we could place it maybe on the west side, maybe it's closer to the road as opposed to the south side or the east side, so it's not abutting the neighbors, it's more on the facade by the road? Can I, can I approach you? Can I, or, or yeah. and just, just to be on record. Yeah, the AC, AC units, obviously, they're, they're going to be uh, a split system. So the units, the, the blower itself is, is within the building itself, so you're not going to be able to see. It's just the condensers outside. So condensers are like 30 inch square, uh, you know, which, which normally they're, they're hidden in, inside the landscape. So we'll make sure that we'll provide a path for it and you know, just screen it with the landscaping. And as you said, you can put it on the left, I mean, uh, on the west side, mm -hmm. closer to the road. So there will be most probably about four of them. Yeah. And then there won't be as much noise. Yeah, what we were planning to do is to put within the courtyard so it won't bother anyone. Because right in front, we have some landscape areas there in front that we could have actually hidden those two on each side, which will be centrally located is much better as far as uh, you know, efficiency. We're just oh, trying yeah. to keep it away from the neighbors. No, I understand. So then, that's what we we actually designed the courtyard because the courtyard will be kind of in, in, in you know internal for if you will for the function. So it's away from the interaction. Okay. So you're suggesting the position that you were suggesting. Was yes. These two yes. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, that's a large very area forward. there. I mean, we can just just put it on the corners. This, they're very two each each side of it. Or we can put two in front, two in the back side where where enclosure occurs. We will, if you leave it to kindly to us, we will we'll make sure that we, and then they can review it, the planning and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And, and also a good comment that uh, Ms. Morgan was making: the the garage is uh, actually uh, symmetric with respect to that. What what I guess in the elevation that we are seeing is a just a extension in the rear of the garage on the right hand side that is not symmetric. But the garage oh, is so talking so. about shifting these a little bit more center of this volume. <coughs> the same thing in here, which is uh, which is it's kind of spread out. Yeah. The reason that we've done that uh, is because uh, for cars to be able to maneuver, and that's like the 50 feet that I need for that. That's that's the only thing. I would hurt, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there was one other um, point, which was to um, condition that the garage pad elevation should not be altered from what we found on the drawings. 
his concern about it. Yeah, he needs to solve that. Technically, he needs to add some more stairs to access mm -hmm. the. But those are interiors. The interior, interior, yeah. Interiors. But, I mean, as, long yeah, as, but as long as the elevations the don't change, yes, correct. Any other comments or mm -hmm. conditions? Are you ready for a uh, Make a motion to approve the conditions. I'll second it. I have a motion by Board Member Mardian, a second by Board Member Simonian. In terms of roll call, Board Member Charchin? Yes. Board Member Simonian? Yes. Board Member Mardian? Yes. Madam Chair Palmer? Yes. The motion passes 4 0. The next project is PDR 1415488 at 2631 Amosa Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, good evening, Madam Chair and United Board Members. Uh, the next project is a proposed uh, three unit. The residential unit development at 2631 Hermosa Avenue, uh, up in the center. I'll uh, give you a little background on this project before we move on. Uh, recently, the board tried proposal on this particular site, right, the unit uh, residential development. The design review board approved the project. Subsequent to that, the, the project was appealed to the city council. The city council considered the project and reversed the board's approval and denied the project. This is a new, technically a new application on the same property, but this proposal reflects the discussion that took place before the city council, as well as the design review board's uh, comments and conditions when the board reviewed it. And also to put this in context, when the board reviewed this, reviewed this project, there was another proposal for a similar development, three-unit development, on the adjacent property to the east by the same applicant. The board approved that project also. That project was not appealed and currently is under construction. If the board wishes to see the drawings for the adjacent property, we have them here for uh, reference purposes. So having said this, on the subject property for, for tonight's uh, review, the proposed project consists of a single family unit in the front portion of the lot. This is gonna be a one-story building. The rear portion of the lot will accommodate a two-story duplex, all with attached garages. The plans are on the board behind you. They, like I said, they reflect the comments and the discussion that took place before the city council. The applicant has worked also with our design review studio to refine the design. With all this, staff's recommendation, staff's recommendation is for approval of the project with one condition and that condition is to maintain the existing uh, uh, stone wall at the front of the property. And that's a characteristic feature of the site. I would like to wrap up my presentation on the first question for the board. Uh, I thought we had an ordinance that uh, the government had cut off with four or five years or six years or under six years to be exempt from design. Is that it's not exempt any new development. I mean, it's not exempt, but it doesn't have to go to the DRB unless right. there's concerns. There, there, there is no standard exactly to that effect. However, we felt that this project should come before the board given the past history and the appeal. My other question is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, refresh me on the parking requirement, um, Mr. Chris. Uh, if, a, if a unit is 1,500 and higher, or efficiency are 1,500 and higher, and it's a uh, three bedroom requires 2.5. Right. So if it's 1,500 and it's not three bedrooms, or less than 1,500, <coughs> it's two car bedrooms. Yeah, the requirement, the parking requirement is, is based on the number of bedrooms, and these are two bedroom units. But I thought there is a section that says 
efficiency of 1,500 to 2,000 and two bedroom units require 2.5. The reason I'm questioning that because I see some of these units being over 1,500, unless if I'm interpreting that wrong. This is actually in relation to the the fifteen hundred. It would be efficiencies up to one thousand five hundred square feet. So it would only be efficiencies. Um, so in this case, efficiencies up to one thousand five hundred square feet, and one bedroom units require two parking spaces. Two bedroom units require two parking spaces. Efficiencies greater than 1,500 square feet up to 2,000 square feet, meaning if it's, a, if it's no bedrooms, an efficiency, a studio apartment, but is within 1,500 and 2,000 square feet, it would require 2.5 spaces. Same with three bedroom units, it would require 2.5. So in this case, I'm a little older than 1,500 in this unit's couple of months. How does that work? Yeah. If it is over, it, when they have Bedrooms, is, the parking is only based on the number of bedrooms. So I could have a 2,000 square feet unit, a two car garage. If you have a so two, two bedroom, bedroom unit, 2,000 square, two square feet, it's a two car garage, correct. When it comes to the number of bedrooms, the square footage does not come into play. It, the square footage only comes into play when you're dealing with an efficiency. That way. If it, if it is a very one lo very large studio apartment that is 2,000 square feet, the parking requirement would be 2.5 spaces for that very large two, you know, uh, zero bedroom 2,000 square foot efficiency studio. The reason I'm questioning this matter, Chair, because I look at the floor plan, I mean, the, the third family room could be easily converted to a bedroom. I mean, how do you control that? I'm sorry. I didn't. You know, if you look at the floor plans, especially the back uh, three units, um, the bedrooms, the floor plan is designed that you know I could convert this into three bedrooms just by putting a small wall. How, how do you control that? I know that, that the design. it's not a design issue. But, I mean, it's not a design aesthetic issue, but it is. Staff actually takes a look at it. Um, the, you, the areas that can essentially be closed off easily with a door, let's say they do not have a closet in there, they call it a den that can be used as a bedroom, is treated as a bedroom when it comes to parking. That's in the code. However, when it is somewhat of a larger door span, it does not have a closable door. Um, it is integrated within the unit as one of those walkthrough dens. Staff has to take a look at it at face value and when it goes into plan check, knowing that it is considered a den, in the, or I should say it's part of the larger unit and is not counted towards parking. True, if it ever could, is, if they ever come before the planning and zoning staff and they want to convert it to a bedroom, unfortunately at that point in time, we would have to tell them that you do not meet the car parking requirements. You have to go through the process to take a look in regards to increasing the number of bedrooms in that unit. But at this point in time, based on this current proposal. Again, so I could have 2,000 square feet unit, however you want to call it, two bedrooms. Correct. In, in addition to that, to call it technically a bedroom, there are building code requirements that you can, correct? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. I'm going to open the hearing. Mr. Morales. I'm sure if I can ask the, for the homeowner to go first because oh, he has a letter to Just give your name and address to the um, And who would like the five minutes? Because no. I know the applicant. Okay, no. that That's why I'm not like Thank you. My name is uh, Larry Tastian, and I live at uh, 612 Berkshire Avenue in La Cunada, so I'm not too far away. And if you don't mind, just speak, speak sure. loudly if possible because. Okay, um, there's been quite a bit of controversy on this project, and because of that, I, I prepared a statement that I want to um, make a presentation to the design of the board, and I'll give Chris a copy for the records. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present the 
Design Review Board our request for approval for my family's project located at 2631 Mimosa Avenue in Glendale. As you're aware, our initial 2631 Mimosa project was appealed by a number of neighbors in the community based upon a second story in the front unit on Hermosa Avenue, not being compatible with the scale of the neighborhood after initially being approved by the Design Review Board over a year ago on October 10th of, 20, of 2013. This appeal was heard in front of the Glendale City Council on March 18th, 2018 and denied our, denied, denied our Design Review Board approval based upon the above issues. Even though we've not asked for any variance on our 2631 project relative to our R3 current zoning restriction, we've accepted all guidance from both the Design Review Board and City Council as to what is best for the Hamosa Avenue neighborhood. While our delay has been economically painful, we have continued to work with the City of Glendale with the objective of final construction approval. During the appeal process, I requested that our initial application be grandfathered to save on a new parks and library fee increase from 6,000 to 20,000 per unit, in addition to additional design review fees and architectural design costs. Uh, Mr. Hani, Director of Community Development for the City of Glendale has advised us this request is not possible and we accept that conclusion. To avoid any further misunderstanding and to accommodate the specific sentiments of the neighbors, my son Andrew, and I held a meeting at our, at our request with Mr. Richard Durian at his home in early May 2014, asking for his support in approving our new proposed 2631 design, conceptually based upon reducing the square footage of our project and specifically eliminating the proposed second floor on the front unit facing Hermosa Avenue. We asked in good faith for Mr. Durian's support, and he responded by stating, he would support our new design as proposed. At the same time, Richard requested that we again address our approved 2625 project with the objective of reducing the front home from two stories to one. While we had approvals initially submitted on our 2625 project, we told Richard we would consider proposing um, our 2620, 2631 design to the 2625 lot if and only if he could get city approval to approve the design without any further cost or time delay to us. We went on to explain we've already submitted for plan check, we were scheduled to begin grading in the next few weeks, and time was of the essence. It was agreed that Richard would reach out to the Design Review Board with a number of suggestions to explore this alternative. I understand that Richard did have a conversation or two on our proposed idea with our architect Franco Bavarian and our Design Review Planner. At our meeting, we gave Richard our email address and phone numbers and asked that he please not hesitate for a minute to contact us at any time should he have any questions or, or ideas he wished to discuss with us. No proposal was ever presented to, uh, to me to resolve his concern and we commenced grading construction approximately two months ago. On October 28th, I called Richard to again ask if, I, if he had any questions relating to our 2631 application and asked for support at, at, this, at this hearing. I met with Richard and my son. Richard was very upset the 2625 project had commenced construction and specifically was upset the project was leveled by 18 inches from back to front of the project to support grading plan requests and reduce retention wall mass at the rear of the property. I asked Richard if we could again meet with the neighbors to explain the city grading approval process and resolve any further issues relating to this design review hearing. The meeting was held on the evening of October 30th with three neighbors, including Richard and Grant Michaels from Mon Montrose Verdugo City Spar Heights Neighborhood Association. The intent of this meeting was to discuss our 2631 approval. Two more paragraphs. Richard again expressed his dissatisfaction with our grading design on 2625. My son and I were discouraged with his comments that we would have been more than willing to contemplate a design change in our grading plan if he would have expressed his dissatisfaction to our design team. In fact, we agreed on the spot to eliminate any grading on our proposed 2631 project unless required by the design review process. We are again in front of, we are again in front of design review and respectfully request approval of our 2631 Mosa Avenue project as presented. 
I strongly believe the project will enhance the property values on Mimosa Avenue and are consistent with other multifamily units literally next door to my proposed project. We love this community, community in which we live. Strongly believe that our family geared project will be a wonderful addition to the fabric of the community. This project, as proposed, is presented to address all issues coming out of the Glendale City Council appeal meeting in March and is submitted and verbally approved by Richard at her May 2014 meeting. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. I'll leave a copy of this for you, Chris. You can I just want to mention that uh, the 2625 project is done with this board and we will not be discussing anything regarding that project tonight. So if other people have concerns on that, we can't discuss that. Okay. We're really concerned with that. I apologize. I just want to give no, you no, a I understand that. I'm just saying for future people, the 2631 is what's on the agenda for this evening. Okay. Um, Before I continue, am I going to... I'm allowed? sorry, we can't have cross-communication. Well, I've been accused I'm, of a lot of things here. I'm sorry. You don't have a chance to speak, Mr. Turner. If you have a card here, we're welcome to speak. Mike, no? Oh, no, I'm just saying. You're done. Franco. Good evening, Madam Chair and Board Members. My name is Franco Noradian, uh, 409 West Broadway, Glendale, California, 91204 is my address. Um, I'm the architect on the project. Uh, this is a multifamily zone, but uh, there are a number of single family homes in the neighborhood. So from the very beginning, we decided that we were going to design, we weren't going to do an apartment building. We were going to do a uh, units that look like homes. That's why the decision was made to put a single family, just briefly about 2625. There's a single family unit in the front and a duplex in the back. And we were going to do the opposite on this lot, which is a duplex in the front and a single family in the back. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't find out that that wasn't acceptable to the neighbors until after <coughs> the design review board had been approved and I found out they were going to appeal the project. So city council told us to do, um, put the single family in the front and make it one story because they heard the neighbors loud and clear that they didn't want two story homes. Um, so we did that. That's what this new proposal is. And um, also what happens is um, the, the previously proposed project was larger because one of the bedrooms, one of the units was a three bedroom and therefore it required three car parking. And now there are two bedrooms, so in addition to cutting the square footage of the unit a little bit, we also cut down one of the bedrooms and we cut down one of the garages. So substantially less mass, uh, uh, and of, of course it's one story. And uh, what my client was referring to at our meeting, we found out that, uh, again, I found out for the first time that, uh, um, that this project, even though it's one story, it still, it wasn't acceptable to the neighbors uh, because um, we are grading, we have to grade because it's a little bit of a slope. So you have sections, yeah, I believe you have sections on that wall behind you. And what we were proposing in those sections is a three and a half foot retaining wall in the back. So we're cutting the lot to make it more level. But I was proposing to raise the front unit 18 inches above grade. And that wasn't acceptable to the neighbors. So what I have with me is a revised section and we are agreeing to N not bring it up at all. So, so we would have to basically, uh, the entire lot would have to be lowered by 18 inches. To imagine sinking both, both buildings down 18 inches. So that makes our retaining wall in the back from a three and a half foot to a five foot high wall in the back. And by the way, there's already a five foot high wall in the back compared to the, the project that's behind us. So, that all that is shown on the section. So we'll be essentially 10 feet below the, the project behind us uh, by doing this. But we agreed to do that if that would make the neighbors happy. So, and I have the sections here. Chris wants to put it up. Um, Can I ask you a question? Yeah. The 18 inches you were to raise the front, does yes. that be like where the top of the existing stone wall is now? Uh, no, it was going to be 18 inches above the natural grade at that point. So basically, what, and, and there's a little bit of a slope, so basically what the proposal currently, our floor will be pretty much even with the top of the stone wall. So after before, it was going to be like three feet above the sidewalk. No, no, sidewalk. no, it was going to be 18 inches above the stone wall. Now no, I said above the sidewalk. 
Oh, oh, yeah, from the because we can't touch the right. okay. we can't I'm touch the remaining. Yeah, the existing wall stays, so that we can't help. Uh, that's an existing. I mean, we're required to keep. So that now wall. you're proposing at the light height of the stone wall, basically. Yeah, for pretty the front much. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you see on the sections, we're we're at grade basically. Uh, of course, I can't be at grade because if the my floor has to be a little bit eight inches higher. So therefore, I'm I'm depressing the floor of the entire lot. Uh, and you'll just have one five that. foot wall at the rear. I I used to have a three and a half foot wall in the previous. Uh, in this one. In this one, we have two five foot walls. One of them is existing. One of them is new that we're proposing. Okay. Yes. Um, obviously, I have a sorry report you're doing the next door. Mm -hmm. um, don't you have to remove and recompact that yes. way? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, how much is that called for? Do you have an idea? Uh, three, three feet, yeah. Three feet. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, did you do that the next door building too? Or? Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm just thinking out loud, why did you say, I mean, I understand what you're trying to do with a new uh -huh. part, but why the back? Because, you know, you have a slope that it should break down. Why, why the whole thing? Why can't you step the back? Higher? Keep leave the back where it is? Or whatever, yeah. I mean, maybe. Well, because, you know, there's a driveway that, uh, from the front, there's a driveway that gets to the back units, and I didn't want to have a sudden slope in that. No, no, I'm not saying sudden slope, but we don't want to push it up so low. I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we, that's a possibility. We could only lower because the front. I'm trying to see, we'll, uh, to minimize some... You're trying to see the mindset behind it. Yeah, why, why was it submerged a foot and a half? Because um, we look at grading also, I mean, we look at, you know, how much... You're already removing the reef back. Right. Now we're removing more dirt. Right. Then, you know, to come to natural trade. Right. That's actually what I was trying to Right, right. Yeah, yeah. so before I was trying to minimize grading, but uh, whatever the board's recommendation is, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. But we're open to that. So you would have like eight foot sidewalls? Four Down sides. sides, if you drop down. No, 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 no. The sidewalk, there's a cross, uh, a section going the other way too. Uh, the, it'll be only about, uh, will be three to five feet in the back. As the property goes, to the slope. So I'm saying side. So the side, side, side property, property lines. The house next door is a certain grade, it's got a wall. Right. And you're gonna drop that, if you drop that down. Right. That wall will be a retaining wall. Yes, a, uh, up to five feet. It'll go zero to five feet. Top. Oh, the other wall on top is already existing. That's only from the neighbor to the back. It's not the side. It's only the neighbor in the back that's higher. Okay, we're, we're talking about the west, uh, west side of the property. I mean, yeah. and the, and the east side of west. Yeah, yeah, east, east, east and west. west. Which, which would have zero to five foot retaining wall. Well, not on their side. It, we're going down. So we're right. going to have it on but our on side. On your side, yeah, yeah, yeah. it will be a retaining wall plus yes. the freestanding wall. Freestanding wall is only in the back. The, the the five foot existing retaining wall is only in the back. Am I not? Uh, maybe I'm. I'm not explaining. I can come up to the. This is your grade. Yes. We're going to have a retaining portion in here. Then you have another wall on top. Right? No, 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 no. Can I? Sure. Yes, come on up. I'm sorry. I, I, maybe I didn't expect. I wasn't expecting. I was only talking about this wall back here. I'm talking about the sides. Oh no, the sides. There is no walls. We, we would introduce, we would have to Are have you trying to say there's no wall on top of the retaining wall that's going to be required on the east and west property lines, which is going to range from five feet in the rear to zero feet on the street? Correct. Right. There's no fence or anything well, on that on top of it. No, no, we, we, I mean, we can have a fence. We, we obviously, we'll need a fence, but which there's no can. retaining that's, wall. Yeah. That's what I meant. Oh, okay, yes, but I didn't, I didn't understand you. Yeah, we will, we'll have to have a fence because of you know, privacy and security So you will issues. have the retaining portion at the, right there, uh -huh. plus the fence on top of that. Yes. That's all I'm asking. Yes. Thank you, Frank. Yes. Are there any other questions? I, I interrupted you. Really no, I'm done unless okay. you have questions. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Beatrice Schwartz. Good evening from the Design Review Board. Uh, my name is Peter Schultz and I'm living in 2644 Hamosa Avenue in Rochelle. Alright, I was just hearing what um, what the previous speaker said and uh, yeah, we vote against the grading and it sounds like he 
the other party is uh, is listening to us that they uh, want to do what we what we prefer to do. So that's really good. And I also hear that the project will be smaller because we really thought the whole thing was just too big when we saw it first. And that was also discussed at the last meeting we talked about the project, that they should think about a smaller version. And we just said that one bedroom was removed, I think, in the plan. Is that right? Yes. And um, so that makes me very happy. And I have another question about the landscaping because I never saw any plants. And our neighborhood's very green when you drive through uh, Hermosa Ave. There's like a lot of trees. It's like really beautiful. And I was wondering what they're going to do about the landscaping. Are they going to put some trees in front that it will be fitting? Because I didn't see anything in the proposal. Yeah. And I just wanted to say, and I don't know if that belongs here, but the place originally, the other, we just moved to the neighborhood about six years ago. My neighbors told me there used to be 100 years old pine trees on this lot, and it was really beautiful. And the next owner just cut them all down, and uh, so it was actually a beautiful lot, and the old neighbors, they remember that. So we really like to have some uh, landscaping there, trees or whatever would fit into the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Shirley Griffin. Good evening, our honorable board. I'm Shirley Griffin, resident of Glendale for 40 years. And I've been a past member of the Board of Governors for Allen Sales Community Education. 1114 Sweet Brother Drive, Glendale. I have reviewed the City Council appeal hearing on this uh, property uh, project. I agree with the comment of Councilwoman uh, Laura Friedman made that the property would be a better fit with two units instead of three. In addition, the existing grade and pad for the front unit should not be raised. This condition should be made whether the project is approved for either two or three units. Thank you. Thank you very much. Richard Deirdre. Yes, my name is uh, Richard Duridori, and I'm uh, living across the street from the project at 2618 Hermosa Avenue. Um, there's a passage from Mark in the Bible that says, uh, if you have ears, hear. And one thing that wasn't mentioned, doesn't even seem to be addressed, that I also brought up at the City Council appeal, and it applies to both projects, is that this, this stone wall that's going to be an integral part of this design is more than three feet high above the adjacent grade. That being said, the state code of California calls for a guardrail to be um, uh, placed, and I don't even see a guardrail in the project. Uh, we're, we're happy to see that the um, grading will lowered and not raised from the existing pad, but frankly, uh, we're not sure that that's what the result is going to be. Uh, the project next door, unfortunately, um, had a chance to be rectified when they raised the grade 18 inches, and knowing the history of the project, where the city council and everybody in the neighborhood was against you know, this tall building, what they did next door was they just went ahead and raised a two-story building 18 inches higher. Staff didn't catch it or knowingly approved it. The architect didn't seem to care about it. And the property owner developer, uh, maybe to save money, you know, could have lowered the grade by 18 inches, but instead they took the opposite uh, course. So what we're concerned about today is not only what type of project and what it looks like uh, is passed or not passed by this board today, but we want to make sure in the conditions, and I don't think it's too much to ask, that if the grade be raised at all for whatever reason by whatever agency having jurisdiction, 
that the public input be had and it become returned to the design review board. If the front gray pad is remaining as is, as proposed with the corrected drawing, then you know nothing needs to be done further. And as far as the last project, I know with the exception of uh, Chairperson Judy Palmer, I don't believe your vote or you were even part of the committee uh, that, that passed the last the previous project. Uh, in our opinion, in the neighborhood, we are very upset the way this, that project was handled, and we don't want, to, want it handled in the same manner again. And in my personal opinion, as well as a number of the neighbors, it's the board's reputation that is also on the line, so I think you need to protect yourself as well by including that kind of statement that I suggested earlier. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We have no more cards. Is there anyone who wishes to speak that has not have a card? I'd like to. I want to fill out a card after you speak. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Give yeah. your name and address. My name is Andrew Tastian. Uh, I live at 12 Birch Avenue, La Canada. I'm Larry's son. And I just wanted to get up and say real briefly that uh, we worked really hard on this project to, to make it in line with the, what we heard at our appeal hearing. I can tell you that uh, I think it's going to be a wonderful addition to the neighborhood. My wife and I plan on moving in here. And uh, we'd really appreciate your reasonable consideration. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Franco, did you want to answer any questions? Or does the owner want to answer any questions? Is there a rebuttal? I don't no? think so. Okay. No. Um, I mean, do we need to talk about 26? The no, grading no. issue was brought up. Is not at all. I just, in case you had something additional. Um, all right. Chair, I had a question to yes. Mr. Deridori, and I want to get a clarification about the grade. Did, did I ask? If you want to come up to the yeah, please, podium? Please. Mr. Deridori. Um, Mr. Deridori. What is the grade uh, that you're thinking of? You're keeping the grade as is in the front? Correct. The natural grade. grade. Of course, the floor level will be eight inches above by code, assuming it's five yes. one grade. Mm -hmm. But you also questioned the stone wall with a guardrail on top. Well, my understanding of the California code, it's a state code issue, that if, a, uh, if there's a retaining wall, and that stone wall is a retaining wall, as it is also next door, that the grade that it's retaining, measured from not from the top of the wall, but from the adjacent grade that it's retaining, if that uh, grade is higher than three feet than what is on the lower portion of the ground, which I brought a surveyor and had him check it out, if, if it's more than three feet high, then there needs to be a guardrail. And I brought this up at city council. It was ignored during plan check for the adjacent property. And I'm bringing it up today. But as you all know, or the correct is that you cannot have fences and walls in the front of property line that exceed that kind of a. Not my problem. I, mean, I understand. But how could we put a. You're suggesting we do a. a a guardrail on top of that wall? I'm not suggesting that's the state law. That's the state. Uh, I'll ask the zoning for later for the climate. Uh, but we also, I read, you know, we're trying to maintain the stone wall. Do we know that it's three feet? It doesn't look three I, I feet. Well, know. you could, if I might interrupt, there, I, I don't know what the site plan looks like now, but um, there were spot elevations given. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Ravian, please. Um, just to clarify and tell you what my understanding of this hose is, it's not three feet, it's 30 inches. Anything more than 30 inches requires a garter, but that's only if you have a patio or a walkway. A landscape area can be above by three feet or four feet or whatever it is. It's just a landscape area, no one walks there, no one, therefore there is no garter required. How tall is the wall? It's uh, between 30 inches to even 42 inches at some point. It's an existing condition. We're not. Okay, thank you for the clarification. I'm going to close the public hearing. Mr. Charchi, do you want to start comments? Yes, I can start. Um, I want to 
first of all, I'll just say that you know I'm, I'm new to DRP, so I'm looking at this for the first time, and I'm not reflecting on anything in the past. Okay. Um, from design uh, efforts, um, one of the things that just sticks out to me is I think that um, the scale of the home in the front has been reduced to such a degree that I think that there's a lot of um, unusable features. There's, there's a, this the main issue that I have with the, with the project, as I look at it you know, from the design uh, pieces, this porch area in the front. Um, and I don't know if this has sort of been scaled back and scaled back to minimize the effect of this uh, residence, but you have an unusable porch. Um, and the porch, if it was not there, or if it was made a little larger, or, uh, and I, we have to accommodate for setbacks, of course, might give a little bit more depth to this property, make it more of a, of a uh, uh, fitting property for the for the area. Right now, it, it looks from a, from a design uh, piece that it, it doesn't look like a, a true craftsman. It doesn't look uh, like it fits. Um, the entry door um, is also very minimal. Um, and that also uh, is, is a concern to me. Um, the use of the rock, and the, I don't know, uh, is there any other board right there? You're using uh, like a washed pebble rock, uh, El Dorado stone, um, and I think this is uh, potentially something that would work with what you have in, as the existing feature in the front but I think that uh, you're carrying it over a little bit too much from a design perspective. As far as the uh, two units in the back, um, again, I think that you, you know, there's, there's concern there from my perspective about some of the uh, features may have been muted in this process. Um, I would uh, welcome maybe um, some feedback from my colleagues who are, 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 are more um, Tuned to this profession, to the profession of, of design, um, on some of these uh, features here, I, I don't understand the overhang over the garage and, and what that's uh, trying to achieve. And I'm also concerned that the north uh, elevation um, has too much symmetry of the windows, um, given that there's a property that that looks uh, uh, to. Um, these are some of the thoughts overall as far as the project goes. Um, I think that the uh, three unit project for this area is appropriate. Um, I think that with some fine tuning that this project can work. Um, I am concerned with any grading that is going to create uh, a uh, five foot retaining wall at the back part of the property on the um, west and east sides. I think that that's a lot of concrete that your potential tenant or potential uh, purchaser of this property is going to be looking at, or, uh, or family member if they're going to be living there. And uh, I don't know how that's going to be addressed with landscaping because it doesn't seem in the landscaping plan that there's a, retain, a retaining wall that's being addressed. So um, I would want to uh, get some feedback on that. That's it. Mr. Samaria? Uh, before I uh, uh, express my thoughts, I wanted to double check uh, and hear from staff um, regarding some of the comments that might have been made by the council members in reference to the grading. Um, so, in, in other words, um, someone from the audience mentioned that uh, <clears throat> Council Member Friedman and perhaps others had had made comments about about their desire for the grading to be minimized and perhaps the pad elevation to have been dropped. And I wanted to understand the context within which those suggestions were made. Uh, Mr. Board Member Simone, I don't specifically recall any specific comments regarding lowering the pad or lowering the grade, mm -hmm. but there were comments, general comments made about the scale of the project of the size of it and the two-story aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so there were general comments, not specific uh, uh, instructions to modify the project. 
So the applicant took all those comments into consideration. Um, there was a meeting with the applicant, the applicant, and with the neighbors. Mm -hmm. And then the applicant also met with our design studio to refine the design. But the focus was to lower the mass, which was the result of uh, lowering the front unit to a single level and reducing the scale of the front unit mm -hmm. from three bedrooms. And, and, and so in specific to the lowering of the pad, um, does staff have any suggestions, preferences, or have discussions occur that lead staff to lean one way or another that we might not be aware of? I think there was, um, uh, it was considered, and I think the feeling was that to export that additional soil and you know, seemed unnecessary for what the actual um, resolution was, that there wasn't enough gain, and that the uh, lowering the uh, front um, home to one story and then having the two story in back, mm -hmm. that it had really accomplished the overall, the overall intention of downscaling the overall size. Mm -hmm. The, the other aspect of that uh, is the relatively low pitched roofs mm -hmm. and the overall height of the building. The overall height of the building complies. Uh, and do we and know? The roofs are relatively low pitched and they cover small areas so that the ridge is not very high. And I'm seeing that in the rear section, it actually has uh, nine foot clear ceilings with very low roofs. And so maybe the overall height is probably over 22 or 23 feet at that, on, on, at the rear, I would imagine. I don't have an overall dimension, but it does seem to have very shallow roof lines. Yes, it, it's well below the allowable height. Mm -hmm. 24 instead of Oh, OK, the hand ring now. What did I say, 23, 23, 23. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you for taking the time with me that. Um, you know, when we're, when we're looking at a 10,900 square foot lot, we're in a 30-50 zone, which the density equates to about three and a half homes. And so, of course, we're, we're, we're shifting down, we're, we're now at a, uh, and we end up with a, with a three home density. And o overall, I think uh, the board has a preference of trying to minimize mass as much as possible along the front of a project. And, and by doing that, of course, you, you have two choices. One is to go with a one story um, in the front, or, or if you're gonna do a two story, you really set back the second story uh, way back from, from, from the front setback. Um, but when you're ending up with three homes on a given lot, you don't have that luxury to kind of go deeper into the lot, and so you really, in order to minimize mass and bulk, you're really going to end up with a one story in the front, which is the correct approach, which is what's happened. So I think um, site planning wise, that makes sense um, for those reasons. Um, another aspect that we typically look, look at is, is the roof pitches and how much mass is created by, by the sheer volume of the roofs. Uh, you can have a one story that has really high ceilings and high pitch uh, roof and end up with a 20-foot height limit, let's say, with a one-story. Um, so it's another way that mass is achieved on a given lot, which in this scenario, both the front and the rear have low-pitched roofs to minimize mass and bulk. So that, that is done correctly as well. Um, as far as the you know, contemporary craftsman style, I guess I would call this, or probably more on the... Um, not so much on the contemporary side. This, this seems to be in line with the overall uh, design language of, of that neighborhood. And it's using more of the traditional craftsman um, detailing, such as the shingles, and such as the horizontal siding, and such as the uh, corbels and window trims, etc. So overall, the architectural details are there. Uh, I do agree that overall it, looks, it seems muted. It seems as though it's been pared back, and I'm not sure if that's for economic reasons or whatnot, but it does seem to kind of lack um, a bit of the... Uh, 
I guess design depth when it comes to those things. It just looks somewhat value engineered, but we could certainly talk about that. Um, as far as grading is concerned, I, I am trying to really understand where the comments are coming from. Um, once you export dirt, you're actually causing a lot of nuisance to a given neighborhood. You're, you're bringing a lot of trucks by, they're loading that dirt up, they're taking it out, and what you're really stuck with afterwards are larger retaining walls. So there's got to be some, some overarching reasons to, to justify that. Um, and so I try to understand that from all aspects and from what I could tell, it's to really minimize mass and bulk and height, and that's what the achievement that's what the intent has been. And so when we're looking at a section in the rear where we have nine foot clear plates and then we have one foot of structure plus the roof height on a shallow roof, they've done everything humanly possible to come up with the lowest two story height that they could come up with in the rear. You could maybe drop it another foot by going with a flat roof or something like that, but then you're just splitting hairs. So is the idea to lower it another foot and a half to just reduce it and what are the gains? What are you achieving by doing that? You're, you're, you're creating a lot of nuisance as far as export and the hauling is concerned, but you've gained, I guess, some foot and a half. Um, when we're looking at the rear section, we're looking at a home that's two-story in height um, and clearly the, the home at the rear is going to have views to the south it's clearly looking over the roof line and of course portion of it is being blocked but there's somewhat of a setback as well there seems to be some 14 foot setback between the structures so I'm not as concerned about that as well um, I do think that the project could be better served by um, working on the front facade a bit more I think it's a bit toned down um, I think as a as a gesture, it would be very nice to build in some conditions where we are going through it one more time in the front facade, not, not as far as the redesign is concerned or anything like that, or return for redesign, but working with staff to do what you typically do best is, is, is to try to come up with um, some extra detailing, to have more of a pronounced entryway, to have some deeper overhangs, to perhaps explore some different materials for the base. Um, as has been pointed out, it's a bit heavy right now, and so you might want to consider even some sort of a um, thicker horizontal siding at, at the base, which is more typical of that style, and then go with a shingle uh, after the band is created. So in, in a way, you're using, again, uh, indigenous uh, materials, but you're not as going as heavy with the rock and sort of blending in, and of course, then we can work on the landscaping as well. Um, but overall, um, there seems to be a, a care that's taken place to try to do everything humanly possible to work with the neighbors. And I believe the project has really um, benefited and that the height's been reduced. Um, unless there was some clear guidance from council or others to lower the pad, um, I think it would probably not make sense to lower that pad another foot and a half just to just to gain some relief because I'm not sure how necessary that is. Um, but again, I'd like staff and board members to kind of talk about that. That might have remembered some details from previous hearings. If there's some good reasons for that, then of course, let's entertain it and talk about it. Thank you. Okay. I agree with most of the comments. Um, I think the lowering, maybe there's a way to compromise and do a little bit lower, a little bit higher. Um, I agree that the front, I would like to see the front, the stone that you propose, I think it's going to stand out as an imitation stone because you already have the real stone wall in the front. So whatever the stone wall is in the front, I, that should be replicated in the building as well. And I think the front elevation of the rear unit is a little, being two stories is a little plain with just horizontal siding. So maybe some stone could be introduced at the base of that uh, the front elevation where the entry is and let's see I'm assuming staff can go over the gutters and downspouts I don't see any indication of that and I notice this is gated I don't know if that's most of the houses in these areas aren't gated so 
might be nice just to leave it open as a narrow lot, and I would prefer not to have it gated. And then as the landscape, one of the residents was concerned about trees, and actually we have too many. Um, they're not noted. It's missing. I think they're supposed to be oak trees. It's not specified, but they have six trees right in the front of this house. You're not going to see the front at all. So I would propose just having the one oak tree in the center, leaving the two on the sides out, and the rest of the trees can be incorporated. I think those are my comments. Could you repeat that again? There's one oak tree in the center. There's one in the, it's not labeled, but there's two, three large trees shown in the front. Okay. Omit the two on the sides, and leave the one in the center. This is only a 50 foot lot, so it's one tree is going to cover the entire lot. 75. 75. Or 75. Thank you. Anyway, I don't have any other comments. Does anybody else? I didn't have the right We skipped Mr. Marty. <laughs> <laughs> that was because of that earlier delay. Hey, right, yeah. Did you um, want to speak? <laughs> you <laughs> said it all, but <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, yeah. in a sense, um, I concur with my colleagues. I think the project has uh, benefited further by reducing the scale of mass. Uh, my concern is to minimize grading. Um, even though there was discussion about the 18 inches, but if you look at the 18 inches, it's only the front piece because he is cutting the half, like the half of the house there. Half of the portion is being removed, so it's not that, it's kind of a balanced cut and fill in the front. Uh, I'm just, you know, concerned that if we grade this in the front further, then the back is going to be graded even further. Mm -hmm. So we have more retaining walls, more. And I'm trying to avoid that. Um, you know, kind of, you know, if we can yeah. step the back a little bit right. up higher, and maybe step it front six inches or a foot, you know, compromise that 18 inches. Um, I'm satisfied with it. As far as the detailing and the mass, the, the mass is fine with me, but I do agree with my colleagues about the the embellishments and the detailings of the house is very simple, very, you know, uh, I don't see much detail occurring. I mean, I think I mentioned this on the previous project that was presented to us in the past, uh, such as vents, gable vents, more, you know, the braces or the corbels in the building that is carried out through not just the front elevation. I see it in the back some areas, but it needs to carry out through the whole building. And I think you already mentioned it, uh, Mr. Charlton, is the porch seems unusable. And I think we commented that on that in the past also, that the porch needs to be set back a little further to make it usable. Um, and my other you know, thought is I have a lot of paved areas. I think we questioned that the last time too, is the, to create the backup area that you have it needs to be Either grass creed or um, colored concrete or some decorative material. Um, pavers. Pavers. Because I think those are all the same comments that we had before. Um, and the downspot, the gutters needs to be there. The attic vents, you're going to have to place them, whether it's on the roof or on the gable ends. Um, and, uh, do you have AC units? AC units is shown, but I had a question on the trash and recycle. How does that work, uh, Mr. Begin? Is it the trash room that we need for three units or no? There is no code requirement for the trash room. For three units. In this particular case, they are tucked behind the front. Definitely. Room. So each unit will have its own individual. But where are I only see one area for There's that. one trash. Yeah, it's actually it's a common area. It's a common area. So we're going to have one. Enough? Is that six bins? That's it's actually regular. more than like nine bins now. That's regulated by the building code, and they will look at it in contract. But we need to make sure that it's placed that uh, it's not going to interfere with the you know, anything else. But this might be one of those service containers as well. If it's a common trash, this yeah. is the only trash for all three, right? That's what I see. Yeah, and it's too small for individual. The way it's drawn. But even with the bin, it's too small to have a recycled bin in it. We don't want to put a bin there. I mean, do we really want to get to the... Uh, I don't know what our options are. Let me call the applicant up. I guess here. 
Well, it needs to be looked at. Uh, we don't need to ask that. I mean, it needs to be, you know, you, you, you need to solve this because uh, if we're not going to have a trash room or recycle room, then where are we going to put all the, we have recycled them, bring them, regular trash. The That's and the balcony. Yeah, we've seen that too. You remember very well. I have a chair. <laughs> uh, but I think we need to look at that. Um, with that, I, I think we need to introduce more exposed beams and braces throughout the building, and um, I'll be satisfied. Um, yes. uh, can I ask a second question? Um, Go ahead. Um, is, 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 the, is the front, uh, uh, what is that, is this, that's the, number. is that at setback? Is the front at setback, or is there room? The, the front is at the minimum report, so. It's 25 feet, yeah. 25 Could the porch? I wanted to clarify my porch comment, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, want, I, was, I want to make sure that uh, I would not, uh, not communicate it as a reduction of square footage in the, in the house, which I think is very small, and it's, and it's, it's creating this minimal uh, feel to it, and it almost feels like it was existing, and somebody built this duplex in the back, and they don't quite speak to each other. But the porch um, ground plan could come out. Yeah, I think the porch, porch yeah, great suggestion. The porch ground plan comes out, um, or if there is room to maybe push the project back to the yard set back and maybe add a foot or so on each side to give a little bit more depth um, so that it is a usable porch. Um, I would be in support of that. I don't know if my colleagues would be. Sure. I think you could protrude into the front setback, right? Not with the supports. Just, just the port. Just the port. Just the port. Mm -hmm. just the port. Yeah. yeah. So if it's cantilevering and a crafting style, the roof can make cantilever to the reports. So mm -hmm. But the impact. It would be more aligned with the design anyway. No, I don't think, I mean, my suggestion is I think you push this thing another foot in the back. Because then. You're right about the craftsman, then we lose the craftsman, we just can't leave the deck and pull it the Why don't we let them work that out as yeah. a condition? Yeah. Let them work it out. Give, give us all the comments and conditions. The front porch area is unusable and either remove or add more depth. Uh, I don't think no, 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 and the elevations overall are lacking embellishments. So it's a general general condition to restudy the front elevation uh, or all the elevations and add more details in brackets, uh, air vents, you know, consider uh, horizontal wood siding as a base instead of the stone. So it's a general reconsideration. Um, And that might include recessing the entry, study materials, larger overhang, horizontal siding. Um, consider um, a compromise in terms of the grading, um, trying to avoid um, too many retaining walls if some kind of solution can be found um, that is a balance between the latest proposal and what was originally proposed. Review gutters and downspouts. Um, there's a preference for a non-gated uh, project. Um, there are too many trees in the front yard. Um, there's one oak in the center to remain and omit two trees on the side. And there's too much paved area used decorative materials or pavers. Um, and that's what I have. Did, did we address the trash issue? Um, 
I'm not sure what the choice uh, uh, is. The architect to work with staff okay. to identify an appropriate trash area to accommodate the three units. We will do that. If I may add one more item. Um, I don't see the electric meter. I, I don't want it to be in the front of the house. I know that's something that's controlled by public service. But, you know, I've seen several projects recently that you know, you try to make this building look good, and then you come back and put these meters, Seven three gas. meters or four meters, with the ballast, you know, with the, the gas. The too. gas. The same thing with the gas. Um, I mean, we need to look at these projects you know, before they come to us where these items are in the future. Um, I usually am you know, to promote these things, but you know, you know, we can't possibly come up with all these things in one meeting. But I think we need to consider the location of those because we have three gas meters, four electric meters. We need to account for those. I would also like to include, if they choose to use the stone in the front, that it match the stone on the wall and not be the imitation. <laughs> Any other comments? Um, clarification for staff, the, st the stone, uh, does that require to be used uh, as a design feature or if they use stone? If they use it so it's visible from the front. Yes. In that elevation, that the stone should match the wall. Thank you. We have a. I move to approve the project with those conditions. I second. If we have a uh, motion and a second, uh, roll call. Board member Charton? Yes. Board member Margin? Yes. Board member Simone? Yes. And Chair Paul? Yes. Board Chair. Thank you. We have the uh, minutes to approve. Correct. We have one set of minutes dated October 9th. And board members Charchin, Mardian, and Palmer were all present. Board member Simone was not. Second. I have a motion to approve the minutes. Um, the roll call board member Mardian? Yes. Board member Charchin? Board member Charchin? Yes. I think that that's the yes. And then, and then Madam Chair Palmer? Yes. Motion passes to approve the minutes of October the 9th. Uh, with that said, is there a motion to adjourn? Sorry. Yes.